OK, so let's think about the sizes and weights of spacecraft. Now, presumably, small things are going to be cheaper to launch, um, but less capable than big things. Exactly. And so there's a trade-off between what that satellite needs to do and how big it is and what your budget is. And in fact, we can see that there actually are just different types of satellites. There is not one size fits all, much like you were just saying, there's different types of cars, there's different types of satellites. A lot of people picture up here what we call these medium to large satellites that weigh hundreds to thousands of kilograms. And they do exist. Yes. But they also weigh hundreds to thousands of kilograms. Which means you only launch one on a rocket, it needs to be a big rocket. That's right. Especially if you go to geostationary orbit. Exactly. Now, there's also a lot of work going into what we call nanosets and small sets, which weigh maybe a couple of kilograms, maybe 10 kilograms. Some are hundreds of grams. Now, very lightweight, relatively easy to put into space, and sometimes you can launch multiple of them but they pr may not be able to do as much as, say, a big satellite. So again, this comes back to what do you want the satellite to do? So how's this changing with time? I'm assuming that uh, if you look at like, consumer electronics on Earth, um, they've shrunk and shrunk and shrunk with time, but it's become more capable. Is the same thing happening in space? Most definitely. In fact, we can see, so this is weight. So red is less than 10 kilograms, those really small ones. Kind of the medium ones are green, and the giant ones are dark blue and so, you know some of these in the early days weigh over a ton and a ton is really expensive to get into space it's really hard yes yeah, so look at the very very early days there were actually lots of small satellites because that's all they could launch that's right uh, but they didn't do very much as went bing 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 as they went around the earth like yeah. sputnik one but then as you get through the 70s and 80s you're dominated by the big ones i mean these are huge satellites that weigh and a that's lot. because they needed to be that big with the technology at the time to be able to do anything useful that's right to fit all of the electronics in the the cameras communication systems as he said your your computer in 1990 is very different than your computer in 2020s. And so that's what... And then suddenly, well, after 2010, whoa! And as you said, this is essentially, you could have replaced this with the, you know, com uh, mobile phone size or computer size, and it's pretty much the same thing. This is purely the advent of smaller electronics. Now your computer chip is much smaller, it could do a lot more, it has a lot more power, it has a lot more data, and therefore the entire satellite can be smaller. A lot of that's driven by the revolution that produced things like this. That's and right. When they're spending billions of dollars trying to miniaturize everything so it can fit in your pocket, we can piggyback off a lot of those technologies. So it's, it's no uh, coincidence that this takes off a few years after the iPhone was launched. Exactly. And, and it's, you know, this is only through, you know, not quite 2020, and we expect it to, you know, rapidly increase. And in fact, if you look just even over time, this is a, a nice NASA plot where you just average per year, what is the average satellite, not just going to the ISS, and even in a 15 year span, it is getting smaller from on average 12 to 1300 kilograms to about 500 kilograms. That's actually a lot. If you're saving 800 kilograms on average in weight, that is that much less energy, that is that much less fuel. A rocket that would launch one of these could launch three of those. Exactly, which means now instead of the rocket being paid for by one satellite, now three satellites can share that cost. So now it's a third the cost just to put that satellite up.